um, the war on peptides. Yeah, let's explain it because there is no reason why they would be banning these things other than for their own profit. The war on peptides. We've discussed before that the most popular peptides in the future will likely be the ones that have secured financial incentive in their use. Ozempic has taken the world by storm and even has a popular jingle. Eli Lilly manipulated the compound a bit and now we've got Munjaro. And to come is the triple receptor agonist Ritatratide and quite frankly this is likely just the beginning. But what about the BPCs of the world? TB500. All the GHRPs like GHRP2, 6, Ipamorelin, the interesting mitochondrial peptide MOTC, Epitalon, Cimax, all the peptides with interesting data that we've dived into pretty extensively on this channel. This fall, many peptides of significant public interest were added to an FDA-regulated category of compounds that raise significant safety concerns. However, the picture painted by the FDA with regards to their reasoning has been ambiguous, nebulous, and even a bit trippy. It seems counterintuitive to discourage further production and research of innovative, low-risk, likely cheap-to-produce compounds by saying they raise safety risks, but by grossly failing to list what those particular safety concerns are. Let's hone in on the comments made with regards to BPC-157 really quickly. The FDA states compounded drugs containing BPC-157 may pose risk for immunogenicity for certain routes of administration and may have complexities with regard to peptide-related impurities and API characterization. FDA has identified no, or only limited, safety-related information for proposed routes of administration, thus we lack sufficient information to know whether the drug would cause harm when administered to humans. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that BPC-157 is all good or all bad, but what I can say with confidence is that this reasoning is preposterous. If the concern for safety lies in concern for peptide-related impurities, shouldn't we be encouraging safe production? It's kind of backwards thinking to say, hey, we can imagine the problem and there are ways to prevent it, but let's just ignore it and encourage sketchy peptide production to continue. Because as stated by Joe Rogan and Brigham Bueller on this most recent podcast, it seems quite accurate that what will happen is that the FDA bans production of peptides, so people seek them underground, which leads to a vicious cycle, a whole unwanted series of adverse effects and impurities, and now the FDA can label the peptide as the scapegoat and not their regulations. They even admit that they have gathered limited safety information. There are plenty of things out there that were shuttled through clinical trials and production without, quote, sufficient information to know whether the drug would cause harm when administered to humans. What's the difference here? Money. And they're beating around the bush, questioning safety and lack of data, but if they were really concerned for safety, they'd be encouraging future research and more data. So I do like that Sermoralin and Tessamoralin remain untouched, However, the statement made here is a lot greater than what's banned and what's not banned. It's the discouragement from continued research of these little tiny compounds that seem to do some wild things. And I say this facetiously, but hopefully Big Pharma takes BPC and its friends under its wings so that we can conduct research and clinical trials and maybe even make some jingles one day. 2023 was a big year for peptides, and I've loved every second of going through the research. Peptides aren't in any way dead, but I think this is quite a big hurdle that with enough advocacy should hopefully be jumped through. All in all, what are your thoughts on the matter? Do you agree? Disagree? I'm curious to hear where you're at. And if you like this video and you want to see more content like this or just about peptides in general, please give us a like and a subscribe here at the channel. Thank you very much. You take care.